afternoon to everyone there at the Richwood. Good to be back with you today. Hope you enjoyed the uh, message last week with Brother John. And so, <clears throat> hope everybody's doing well, staying healthy. I know uh, this COVID, COVID virus or whatever is still hanging around, and we're praying that uh, we'll survive, everybody will survive, and you know get past all this COVID stuff. So, Michelle, hope you're doing well. Hope everybody there listening today is doing well. <clears throat> I got a little thought for you today. Hope you enjoyed the, the piano playing earlier. Um, the lady playing that piano is named Natalie Rains, and her grandfather comes to our church, our camp meeting in the summertime. Uh, we didn't have it last year because of the virus, but uh, most of the time he comes to our camp meeting. Well, she does a great job on that piano, so we hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to be in the book of Esther today. If uh, I'm sure a lot of you know about the book of Esther, I just got two or three things I want to say about it. <clears throat> um, in, the, in the first uh, chapter of the book of Esther, there's a, the king, King Asuharis, had uh, the king there had a queen. Her name was Vashti. She was the queen there at the, at the palace. Well, the king required her to come to the palace to come to see him, be in his presence, and she refused to come. And so what did he do? The king took her out of her position. She's no longer the queen. And now they go to look for another queen to replace her. And so um, in chapter 2, uh, let, let me give me one second. I want to turn there because I don't want to miss this. Esther chapter 2, in verse 17 here, let me read this to you real fast. <clears throat> so the, 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 they had brought all these young maidens before the king, Asaharis. But one of the young maidens stood out to, to the king, Asaharis, and that young maiden, her name was Esther. And so the Bible says in verse 17 of chapter 2, and the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. So now in chapter 2, uh, Esther, is she's made the queen there uh, in, in the book of Esther. But then in, in chapter 3, there is a man named Haman. Now, many of you that's read the book of Esther, you know about Haman. Uh, he's a very bad person. And so uh, in chapter 3, the king takes Haman and promotes him to be above. He's kind of like second in command or the king's right-hand man, let's say. So Haman is promoted over all the other dignitaries or the princes. I mean, he's, he's in charge underneath the king here. Haman is. And so then we want to get down to chapter number four, and this is my thought today. In chapter number four, um, there has been a decree. Haman hated the, this gentleman called Mordecai. This is Esther's uncle. He hated Mordecai because he would not bow down to him when Haman would walk by the, the gate uh, uh, there, the king's gate it's called, everybody would bow down to Haman, but Mordecai did not bow down to him. He knew something about Haman uh, that's not recorded in the Bible, but so Mordecai did not bow. Because of that, he found out that Mordecai was a Jew. And so what Haman did, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to the king uh, to make a decree to kill all the Jews around that, you know, any of them around that part there of, of uh, where they were, Shushan and different parts, they were going to send out a letter to kill the Jews. And so Mordecai told Esther, said, you need to go to the king and tell him about what Haman is doing, uh, you know, and try to get this resolved. He, and, and so anyway, Haman said, uh, let, let me read this to you in Esther chapter 4. Then Mordecai commanded to, to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape the king's house more than all the Jews. Because Esther was a Jew also. This is uh, Mordecai's niece 
is Esther, and she's of Jewish descent. And, he's, and Haman had the king send out a letter to all the provinces there to kill the Jews. And she's a Jew also. And Mordecai said, look, if this happens, don't think that you're going to survive this because you're a Jew also. You'll be killed also. And so, <clears throat> for if all together, he said, for if thou, talking to Esther here, if you all together holdest thy peace at this time, if you don't say anything, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. He said, God's going to deliver his people, but if you don't do it, uh, you know, it, it's going to happen somewhere else, but you'll, you'll, you'll be killed. A possibility, you'll, you'll, you'll get destroyed. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed and, and Mordecai said this, Sister Janice, And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Who knows if God has not placed you in this position for this time and, and this place to save the Jewish people? He said, God has put you here for a reason. God has put you here for a certain time uh, because God already knew this was going to happen. And so <clears throat> in... Um, in Esther chapter 4, verse 16, let, let me show you what Esther said. Esther said, Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat or nor drink for three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will likewise will, will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king. She's going to go step in front of the king and which is not according to the law. You were not allowed to go to the king unless the king sent for you. But she said, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to step before the king. She said this, and if I perish, I perish. So that's my thought today. If I perish, I perish. And that's what Esther said. She said, I am going to do this to help save all the Jewish people, my, you know, my, my, my kinsmen, she said, I'm going to step in front of the king even though he has not called for me. She says, it may mean, it may mean that he's going to you know, kill me because of this. You were not allowed to go in front of the king's present, presence unless he actually called for you. And if you did go in front of the king uh, and you hadn't been called, it could mean your death. It, you know, it, they could kill you for that. So Esther said, you know what, I'm going to go and I'm going to step before the king. I'm going to let him know what's going on here, what Haman has done. And she said, if I perish, I perish. She's going to lay everything on the line, regardless of her life. She's going to do what's right. And, and that's, that's really the theme of my thought this, this afternoon. Uh, Bob Jones Sr., Bob Jones University, long years and years ago, you know, I'm talking probably 50, 60 years ago, Bob Jones Sr. said, do right, do right. He said, even if the stars fall out of the sky, he said, do right. So no matter what the circumstances are in our life, no matter what the situation we come up against, he said, always do right. Um, don't, don't let anything uh, cause you to do wrong. Just go ahead and do right. And so uh, uh, Queen uh, Esther here, she's going to do what's right. She's going to try to save her people. And, and try to let the king know that Haman has worked up this whole plan to kill the Jews. And, and so um, I, I thought there's a few things in the Bible where people did right. You know, they weren't, they weren't scared of their life. They, they knew it, it might mean their life. There might be a lot of uh, danger if they do what's right, but they went ahead and did it anyway. I thought about uh, when Caleb and Joshua, the, and there's 12 of them there, uh, went to spy out the land of Canaan. Uh, God had sent them in to spy out the land, to see what was in there. And that's where God had wanted his people to go. He said, I've got a land flowing with milk and honey. So the 12 spies went and, and spied out the land to see the people of the land and, and, the, and, the, and the fruit and the crops and just checking out the whole land. And they were to go spy out the land and come back and tell uh, what, what they had found. Come back to Moses and say, look, this is what we found. Well, 10 of those spies came back and said, you know, 
There's no way we can take this land. The people are too big. Uh, the land is too rough. I mean, just, you know, is one excuse after another. We, we just can't do this, okay? But there was a fellow named Caleb, and he had a different story. Him and Joshua had a different outlook on what happened. The, the Bible said this, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once. Caleb said, don't wait, let's go up at once and possess it. He said, for we are well able to overcome it. Uh, what he said there, dear friend, we are well able to take the land. This is our land. God said he was going to give us this land. Ten of them came back and, and were scared and were afraid to go in and take the land. But Caleb and Joshua, they said, this is a good land uh, they remember they had a big staff on their shoulder, the grapes of Eshkol. The grapes were so big and so heavy, a big old cluster of grapes. They had to put a stick through there and carry the grapes, one, one man in the front, one man in the back. They were so big and so heavy. I mean, just plenteous in fruit and, and vegetables and just a land flowing with milk and honey. So what they did, they said, look, if I perish, I perish. But he said, I know we can go overcome it and we can take the land. Amen. That's the attitude we have to have, dear friend. Uh, we have to have the attitude like Qu Queen Esther. If I perish, I perish. You know, if I fail, I fail. But at least let's give it uh, our best shot. Let's put our best foot forward and try to give all we can, spiritually speaking, not physically. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the spiritual things here now. We need to give it our best shot, our best try. And uh, if we fail, we fail. If we perish, we perish. And so, you know, if I do perish, if I die today, I'm going to heaven, uh, Sister Monica. And I, I'm okay with that. Amen. I'm looking forward to going to heaven. And so <clears throat> there was another uh, uh, portion of the Bible. Remember King David. David was thirsty. His mouth was dry. He was really so, so thirsty. And the Bible said, and David longed and said, oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. He said, is not this, oh, excuse me, <laughs> he said, is not this um, the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. So these mighty men knew that King David was thirsty, and they said, you know what? We're going to break through the enemy's lines. We're going to go to the well there at Bethlehem. We're going to draw up the water and we're going to bring David back that good, cold, clean water. And so what they were saying is, if I perish, I perish, but we're still going to give it our try. Give it our best shot to go get that water. And they did. They brought the water back to David. But they, they could have perished, you know, uh, breaking through the enemy's line there, the Philistines. They could have got killed trying to get that water. But nevertheless, dear friend, they weren't afraid of that. The, the most important thing was getting that water back to David. And they said in their hearts, if I perish, I perish. Amen. And they did what's right. Sometimes doing what's right is not the easy way, but it is the right thing. It's, it's the right way. Amen. And so <clears throat> y'all remember um, the story of Samson. Samson had all this great strength. And uh, they said, where does his strength come from? He, he didn't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger or Charles Atlas, you know. Uh, evidently, he didn't because they didn't know where his strength came from. He's probably just an average person, you know. And um, so, remember, Delilah, she kept asking him where his strength came from. And he uh, kept uh, lying to her, you know. He said this, that, and the other. Finally, she kept asking, kept asking. And Samson finally uh, wore down and said, it's my hair. He said, I'm under a Nazarite vow. He said, I cannot shave my head. You know, just one time of the year he could do that. He said, that's where my strength lieth is in my hair. He said, if, if I be shaven, if somebody shaves my head off, he said, I'll have no more strength. And so that was his Nazarite vow. 
And so anyway, guess what happened? He told Delilah that she brought in the man. They, they tied him up and they poked his eyes out. They put his eyes out and they shaved his head. And he, was, he had no more strength. And when they shaved his head, uh, he, he couldn't break loose from, from you know, them being, him being tied up. They took him down, and he did grind in the prison house, the Bible said. So Samson, the great mighty Samson, stronger than probably 10 or 12 men, I mean, just super strong, uh, became weak. But you know what? At the end of Samson's life, they had this big coliseum, uh, Sister Penny, and they were making sport of Samson. They were making fun of him and, and picking at him because he couldn't do anything about it. But then the Bible said his hair began to grow. And so what happened is his strength was coming back because his hair was starting to grow back out. And then, well, the Bible says this. He told this little, little young boy, he said, um, called unto the Lord. And, and he, he called unto the Lord. He said, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee. Only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines of my eyes. And Samson took hold of the two pillars upon which the house stood, and on, the, uh, on which it was borne up, and the one was his right hand, and the other was with his left hand. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed, his, he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. And so Samson said, if I perish, I perish. Now when Samson uh, pushed those pillars over and this big coliseum came down, God could have protected him in there somehow and kept him from dying. But, he, you know, Samson said, look, if I perish, I perish. I just want to be avenged uh, of the Philistines where they put my eyes out and shaved off my head. Amen. So <clears throat> there's a lot more in there, dear friend, uh, that we could study about. But I just want you to see that little part there that uh, uh, Queen Esther said, if I perish, I perish. And so just do the right thing. Amen. Don't, don't, don't tell a lie. Don't lie to your, your neighbors or your family members. Uh, just do what's right. Do like uh, um, the preacher I said earlier um, said, even if the stars fall, just keep on doing right. Amen. And so that's all i got for you today. I hope you enjoyed that. <clears throat> so I um, hope everybody has a great week. I hope everyone is staying healthy. Uh, Sister Penny, Sister Janice, Monica, Sister Lois, uh, Joe, and uh, John, and, and whoever's watching this video. I hope you guys are staying healthy at the Richwood. And Michelle, we hope you're doing well. So we're going to sign out today. We'll be back next week. We appreciate everybody being here. Hope you got a chance to look at the video. And we are praying for every one of you here at Good Shepherd Baptist Church. Amen. We're praying for you all the time. So uh, just hang in there. Hopefully one day this year we'll be able to get back uh, and see you guys face to face. That's our, that's our hope and our prayer. Amen. We're going to sign out. Hope you have a great week. If you need anything at all, please. Let Michelle know and she'll get with me, okay? I'll talk to you guys later.